Many thanks for joining us on Joy Asoye Live this beautiful evening. I am Joy Asoye and today we're going to be talking about something that affects all of us. That is boosting food security in the country. Conflict around the world has put many developed economies, especially import dependent nations, on edge as food prices have continued to rise in unprecedented manner that have constrained countries to meet, to meet their food needs. My guest today, he is um, the founder and CEO of Farm Monitor Africa Digital Web and Mobile Portal, a technology that uses artificial intelligence uh, to optimize the performance and productivity of farmers and also provide real-time visibility of farmers to both impact and profit-oriented farmer financiers to de-risk uh, both parties. We'll be telling us how Nigeria can boost food security, uh, especially using a uh, smart farming technology, uh, something that experts in the agricultural sector have been uh, uh, speaking about. I would also delve into uh, the, the announcements by the president uh, for uh, um, uh, food insecurity, that is uh, the uh, state of emergency rather on food insecurity, what's been going on in that regard, how uh, can we push, urge, nudge the president to do more and do more fast and what should he in fact do, that will be what we'll be discussing on today's edition of Jurassic Live. Life. Uh, my guest, Daniel Udeme Joseph, thank you so much for being part of the program. Thank you for having me, Joy. Yes. We'll go for a very short break right now to return uh, to get to the crux of the matter. Stay with us. Welcome back from that short break. Like I said earlier, we're discussing boosting food security in Nigeria, especially uh, using the smart farming techniques that experts have been hammering on. And my guest to do justice to that is Udeme uh, Joseph. Uh, that, that's Daniel Udeme Joseph, yes. really. <laughs> the CEO Farm Monitor Africa. Thank you again for coming. Thank you. Thank well, you. I don't have to go through where we are in the country when it yeah. comes to our agricultural sector, especially when we're still using traditional techniques of, of, of farming. But if you have to start with what uh, this, the Farm Monitor Africa is about, I would appreciate that. Okay, um, so that's my talk. So I, I'll just get straight at it. So Farm Monitor Africa is a technology that utilizes um, satellites and drones and boots on ground sometimes to to track to monitor to measure to improve farm performance and productivity and um, the the theory of change is simple you can't have productivity when the farm is not performing of course so the farm must perform and there are several indicators that show you that the farm is performing so more like kpis to see if that farm is doing well so for instance the health of the crop is a kpi to see okay how are my crops doing then the satellite gives you things like ndvi receo those are all technical exactly so let's not go there but basically the satellite can give you um information just special information on the state of your crop so crop um, health is just one okay you want to also track um the scope of the farm um, a lot of organizations and even individuals don't know what size of farm they are farming they don't measure it they just go into the farm and it's important to track the scope because if something isn't measured it can be managed exactly. uh -huh. so um, um so that's another performance indicator we also track them um, the time using our crop calendar to check if the farmers are doing what they should do when they should do it so that's um, using the crop calendar and then of course cost which is a very paramount a, a very important element in all of this uh, and there are so many things that go wrong in cost and there's need to track so for instance if you are a farmer financier financing a farmer sometimes you are giving him three hundred thousand for a hectare of land but okay. you know before the season ends he has spent 400 because nobody saw fuel change coming exactly nobody saw dollar increase coming which in, in affects imported things like um, fertilizer even though those are produced locally these days and all of those kinds of things so those performance indicators are the things we track and then um, because we can track them we are able to 
tell the farmers your crops are not doing so well in this area go and put more fertilizer or put less fertilizer okay and we can also provide the same information to a financier and there are several types of financiers we have the banks who are profit oriented and they give monies to these farmers and they want to get it back and hopefully with interest mm. which many times do doesn't happen and they've been running up and down so we, we sort of give them some guarantees and provide some level of certainty because we are the eyes and the boots in the field and then with satellite images we're able to really see what's going on on the field as close as three meters so we, s we can wow. see a human being on the field uh, but it's a third party service of course that's not that service we don't have a satellite in space so that's subscribed for so what farm monitor does um, um generally then in summary is to pick up all of this farm level data all right and um, put it on dashboards and interpret them for farmer financiers to see um, if their investment is yielding or if it's not yielding that's for the farmer financiers and then for the farmers we are able to pick all of these indices integrated using machine learning okay. and ai and then we can now make farm specific recommendations to them so if you if you know what is wrong with the soil mm -hmm. you know what is wrong with the um, from satellite images you see if the crop is infested you also have the farmer record his activities and then snap sometimes and you need into the system that now shows you what is actually affecting the crop all of this with ai we can now tell you call this farmer this is what you should do now this is where it's important this is far better than what we traditional do which is called good economic good agronomic practice gap so what gap is 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 just what we recommend usually okay you know that you should use two bags of urea for instance right. for a crop but we need more than that information now because climate is changing all right soil is getting degraded a, a, a key element of our ai component is actually weather analytics so rainfall humidity all of that is a key element into the ai so we have five sources of data into the ai model into the ai algorithm so it's satellite um, weather analytics the soil then the disease from um, crop the snapping crops. and then of course the activities that is actually going on on the farm but that now is where the farmer or the extension agent imputes those data that's just the only data mm. that is human dependent the other ones are automatic so but it's important the human does that because of course if you don't tell us what you are doing mm. the system can make any recommendations for you i can only already tell that there's only a certain niche of people or uh, elite farmers <laughs> <laughs> that, that that would be um that would uh, meet you for your services but have uh, is it becoming more uh, popular yes absolutely I, and you know the exciting thing um, what, what what surprises me is why people really think that the you know, farmers are you know no no even you know even the very um there are farmers in the village mm -hmm. they, they relatively the relatively what we will say relatively for mm. for want of language right. the relatively poor ones i say carrying 2g phones okay all right so they receive text messages so we because we don't just serve the elite farmers in fact we are much more interested in the smallholder farmers so we send them text messages um on what they are supposed to do because right. we are tracking what they are supposed to do so they are receiving it maybe because i'm a village girl i mean i come from a remote <laughs> village in cross river state and when i think of the farmers mm. and although those ones would give us the rice give us the cassava yeah. and all of that um i notice I, I don't know if they will fit into the work that you do but i mean the world is going global and these are those technologies that has to be introduced exactly but, exactly but let, let's talk about the security aspect uh, the security that um uh, most farmers face okay well we'll just go for a short break at the moment and then return to talk about a uh, security aspect of this and how um, your technology can assist farmers at this moment we'll go for a short break and come back shortly so stay with us
welcome back we still have daniel udeme joseph right here with us discussing how we can boost food security in nigeria especially using smart farming techniques we have been talking about what the uh, farm monitor africa is doing we've not exhausted that as we're still talking about the small holder family uh, farmers rather and how they too uh, can be part of this uh, udeme joseph yeah. uh, you were explaining how the smallholder farmers are your target surprisingly mm. and i know financial institutions usually run away from them so why do you think you will cash out so to speak uh, you know targeting uh, the smallholder farmers okay so let me start with um, the fact that it's really not about cashing out so cashing out will come naturally but it's really not about cashing out um, we we know the statistics we have more smallholder farmers doing the work right in fact 70 percent um, of farmers generally are smallholder and they're having a 90 percent output exactly so those are facts and um, so we believe that if we are actually going to improve food security we should target those guys and um, do the best we can to give them what they need now so you must understand that the smallholder farmers do really want to improve their productivity they are the ones most affected by some of these things it's not the big guys the big guys can afford yes. a lot of things and so, well, uh, well i'm a big guy too in, in a sense, sense because of right. course i'm also i own my own farm and in thousands of hectares of them so but why we are interested in the smallholder farmers is because they are the ones that really need help so what we do is this um, technology is very simplified it's very user friendly and it's in three different languages Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo. Oh, really? So, yeah, so they can, um, they don't have to speak English to know how to use it, but they have to at least know how to handle the Android phone. But we don't even advocate for the farmers to use it directly. We advocate for extension service, service providers, providers right. to, you know, use it on their behalf, so to mm. speak, because of course that is part of their, or that should be part of their responsibility, um, providing research from inst um, research institutions to them providing technology improved variety of whether it's seeds or input whatever it is it's the responsibility of the extension agents to take it down to the smallholder farmers and so we're working with a lot of um, um, um private extension farmers like food talks um, and we are able to deliver those services to them it doesn't make it is not so economical so to speak but we're making progress we, we are happy we're making some progress you just mentioned research institutions in yes, nigeria yes. i mean do we have uh, vibrant active ones yes. in nigeria that are indeed helping with uh, farmers okay so yes we do um i cannot vouch for everything they do but i know that for instance um the um the serial research institute badigi okay and uh, which, which is very close to my farm in niger i have a farm in the Banasara Bida area in Niger. Mm. Um, I know that they're still doing so well. I know that they are working on their seeds. I know that over the years they've churned out different variety of seeds. So some are doing well. I can't I can't I don't have um, all the information about them but I know right. that at least that one I know that they are doing very well. I also know from because I have um I look at the, the country's budget usually but I, I see how much is allocated to some of these institutions. I just think we can do better. Exactly. I'm really I'm really looking forward to to the um the presidency's first budget i think it will speak volumes how serious we are about agriculture and um, he's declared a state of emergency already so I, i'm really really I'm, I'm i'm hopeful that something good will begin to happen because personally i think between agriculture education and health these three things should 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 have some good money coming in now when experts say we could do better when you look at the mm. agricultural sector i mean you are embedded in it i don't yeah, know how yeah. best to, to describe mm. um how active you are in that sector what would you say is the biggest challenge that plagues it okay security for now is security for now right now it's security and like i would always say it's a convention for the professionals i'm not a professional in security but i know a few of um young people that have created security apps and mm. um, for instance um um I, I know one of my friends that has done a, an app that if you are in the farm with or without network if you push a button 
he can alert security agents so he's just trying to connect the security agents well, into the yeah. yes yes i i and and like i keep saying those are the kind of things we should push and promote you know and that's why i'm even saying it here so that those are the things we should we, we are too stuck with traditional ways of doing things and because the world is evolving security challenge has evolved everything has evolved right uh -huh. so it's important that we we really begin to make some deliberate attempts to change in the direction of the change all right so the first thing is security that has to be sorted out mm -hmm. for people to go back i'm not being um, on my builder farm because i had an eight um, this eight men issue came and destroyed some things on my farm mm. so and that's that's a 300 hectare farm that is lying fallow because of that issue all right even though we are still in benway we are still in delta but that that is a huge farm too that we haven't been able to touch because of those kinds of issues so security is number one and um, maybe outside security the other thing would be um funding but but funding has to be done very tactically um, funding has to be done in such a way that um, there are things so on the budget or the what we call the EOP mm. of of a farmer of every farmer what what you know like you are a woman you go to the market with the list <laughs> exactly. um, on the list of the things you are going to spend on there are there are quite some expensive things that fall under the capital regime so to speak and um, things like um, irrigation all right things like um, access route to you know take out their produce mm -hmm. things like land clearing these are very expensive things that the farmers find them um, um, may not be able to handle at the level of a small holder farmer maybe except they come together as cooperatives which is another thing we really advocate okay all right so if government can provide that and good enough that's something that is in the president's um, instead it of emergency right. yeah so that that for me was it was a fantastic if we can get that done you know get um, land out cleared for people to farm it's, mm -hmm. it's really good and then we can do irrigation look at um, um, egypt for instance the, the place like egypt is doing irrigation and they are exporting more than nigeria, nigeria that we are having all the rains and then we are having a huge water body in the south so again you look at you know, let, me, let me let me let me imagine this why is it easier for us to pipe oil from the south to the north to refine to a refinery in the north why can't we pipe water from the south where we have abundance we have but too a, much of it i mean the, <laughs> the, the, the atlantic is there you know why don't we pipe water into the north and we get the north because that's exactly what um, 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 egyptians are doing it's largely a dry arid area and so they've piped they've done all of those irrig irrigation canals into the areas and they are so productive so these are the kind of investment i'm talking about that come government yeah we can give farmers seed and fertilizer mm -hmm. but those those things on the eop are not as expensive as real heavy investment just like we will invest in oil and build exactly. refineries why can't we invest in irrigation and put water straight down into the north but do you think successive governments have seen the the benefits of investing in agriculture i mean well we, we keep talking about diversifying but we also know the many benefits in uh, the non-oil sector agriculture for instance mm -hmm. would you be if you have to appraise successive governments uh, would you say there's been that intentionality when it comes to the investment that comes with it intentional <laughs> investment really in all honesty no in all honesty i'm trying not to and okay. I, uh, it's it's sometimes tough to really criticize government but i like to be really honest right no actu actually no i think agric has been on autopilot okay so let me tell you something do we actually know the number of farmers we have in nigeria no do we know the actual numbers of extension agents we have in nigeria no even the arable land that we keep saying is estimated if we don't begin to have and there is technology to measure all these things now farm monitor does all of this now it's not even that there is technology we do it all right we can do fence your farm audit your farmers and all of that to ensure that the people that you say you are financing are I actually indeed are indeed farmers right. all right so intentionality no and it's because there has not been intentionality that is why the funding has been um, um, not not as consistent or not as impressive as it, yes, should, it should be, be right. all right and like i said if if we really want to grow this country's agricultural sector we must be willing to invest money like i just gave a classic instance of irrigation if, um, if um, president Buari, uh, president um, tinibu actually does clear 500 hectares of land clearing one hectare of land is 700 000. 
So multiply that. That's huge investment. Okay. Those are the kind of huge investments we are talking about. Onboarding all the farmers on a platform or on several platforms and, and, and geotagging them, knowing who we are giving, what, actually mm. tracking what we are giving, mm. that's going to cost money. That's what we do. And of course, we'll charge money. But wouldn't it be better that if you were going to invest in clearing that land, you also invest in knowing who you have given that land empirically? empirically you can actually see, see on the screen the right. that this is this person's face and this person is doing these hectares and this is the um this is the tonnage we are expecting from this crop so those kind of intentional planning mm -hmm. and execution is what i would say no has been lacking we've left um, in farming for the smallholder farmers as usual and even in the things we are doing to to help the smallholder farmers there is much more um, um, noise about it that what it what is actually happening on the field and i can tell you that authoritatively because i am on the field i don't mind the suits i'm a farmer <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell with the suits. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm a farmer back to back <laughs> okay well you have just mentioned something very important and, and you say that uh, you you can actually track this however i'm sure my viewers will be wondering have you approached government with this technology that you've got or i, I, I like a lot of us we us nigerians rather just um, expect that government should find you okay so yes we have so to answer the question yes we have we actually in talks with um, some organizations government organizations I'm not, i don't want to mention names um so it's going well no, I, I would uh, like you to mention this. So <laughs> see the government agencies or the churches that and that knows that this technology does exist uh, okay, and okay. is not giving it as much <laughs> as, as no, much. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to look for trouble. Okay, okay so if but, you say but, so, but, but we, we, I, I can say that for every agency of government that is responsible for agric, if there are twenty of them, we've met fifteen already. Right, and, and how has the reception it. been um, like? Uh, I'll tell you the good and the bad one so, so that you'll laugh. So I, I'll give you a very funny. Let me, we should I start with the good or the I bad one? I would like the bad one first. <laughs> okay, so the bad one. So in, in a particular state, at last year or two years ago, when we approached the state, the governor liked the idea, actually minuted on the idea okay. for the commissioner to treat. So I go talk with the commissioner, and this drags for too long. So I'm wondering what's keeping. So eventually, the director in that state calls me aside and tells me, come, oh God, this your thing won't fly. The simple reason is that if you are able to bring this kind of audit, how you go take chop money? So, Oga don't keep us. <laughs> okay, so that's that. That's that's Nigeria in its truest sense. All right. Okay, so that's just one one bad example. But I mean, it's not like it happened everywhere. But it just happened in that. that it's but I can tell you for a fact that that might be the reason why several have not embraced it. So, so it still hurts. And what hurts is that a governor could ask a commissioner to do something, and the commissioner didn't do it. So. Anyway, let's not go politics because that's not my concern. I'm not a politician at all. Okay, but on the good side, we've had, in fact, we just received um, a letter um, of collaboration from one of the very major pharma financiers in okay. the country. And they clearly said we've seen, your, because we did a couple of presentations to them mm. and they liked it. And I think I, I like that organization for its transparency. I, I wish I could really mention the name, but because um, part of what is in that documentation is confidentiality. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not going to say, but we have a few organizations that we have talked with and they've been receptive. However, because I do, because of the transition mm. and a lot of things trying to stabilize, things have not been as fast as it should be. Right. But I'm hopeful. I, I know Nigeria will. I know Nigeria will will adopt technology. It, the, the the only thing is, if we don't adopt it early, we are the ones to lose. A, a country like Kenya, they have all the agricultural processes on one platform, and Farm Monitor has already built that platform for Nigeria. We've built it. We, 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 I'm just trying to be to say it as yeah, modest as, as I can. I can, I can, tell, I can <laughs> tell you're trying to get modest, but let's get to let's get relatable okay. to the average Nigerian watching us right now and realizing that um, I used to buy a certain amount of of uh, beans or rice and it has skyrocketed mm. in price. Uh, what is getting us here? Why are we here? Why are, are, are we seeing um, factors that normally shouldn't influence? prices of food influence it what is going on and how can we how can nigeria i mean how can farm how can farm monitor africa help in ensuring i, I mean food food stuff uh, prices are stable okay so um we 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 can help but let me let me answer that question from your initial acts right 
there are many reasons why food prices are going up it's not just one you'll be very surprised to hear that the war in ukraine is affecting our food exactly. prices in nigeria exactly why because we used to import a lot of wheat mm -hmm. and now with the with the war we, we have to find a way to produce this wheat and the painful thing about wheat is that while we spend two billion us dollar importing it which is the highest i think one if not the highest agricultural import into this country we have the landmass to do it we have the human resources to do it that we have farmers to do it we have technology to do it and we have all the risk to have to actually produce as much wheat as we we um, import so when prices so now that there is war and there is shortage of supply prices will go up fuel has increased that increases your total like i said your eop when you were planning that your labor you were going to pay two thousand meanwhile the guy has now is now paying more to come to work it's going to affect because you as the farmer at the field you're not going to I'm harvest and then different. and and sell at a loss you have to include that mm. that you know so there are many things that are the reason now um we've we've opened our borders all right uh, for me it's a mixed feeling for that um because it, it has its own benefits it has its own disadvantages all right and so opening the border means that more things will come in, in. more supply and then there can be competition and the prices will drop off. which i believe is the intention however that will also kill our own local production. local production so i i really hope those things have been weighed properly but i always like to say that well the government is the government because they have information that we don't have and so they will take the best of decisions However, the government too can be wrong can't they let's, yeah. let's talk about rice for instance okay. uh, you know um we we saw the government of uh, uh, buhari mm. that uh, muhammad buhari try to ensure local production mm. uh, nigerians first of all appreciate that should uh, first of all appreciate nigerian uh, rice mm. and then stifle the import of of uh, foreign rice that i gave the government kudos for i i was one of the people who did not find mm. the rice pyramids a scam i indeed actually commended government okay. for what they've mm. done uh, there were also agricultural development programs that were supposed to enhance production of rice i applauded government mm. for it so with this new uh, ban or, or ban lifting on, uh, on, 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 yeah. on, on certain things including rice I'm, I'm wondering do you think that um, with the many challenges that Nigerian farmers already face I mean I know you don't want to go against mm. government or comment too no, much no, on I politics the problem, I, comment, I, I, I feel you're <laughs> struggling to <laughs> comment too no, much on politics yeah, yeah. but is it something you would advise government to reverse I mean I saw uh, uh, items such as toothpicks mm. and, and all of that okay so again like i said the government is the government mm. because they have information that we are not privy to so when they take decisions we want to hope and believe that they've taken it based on data first and foremost they've seen the data and they've said it's better this way on that but you just agreed here <laughs> that we don't even have we don't data. even have the data okay so okay. But, but without trying to be political and trying to shy away from the question i don't have i personally don't have a problem because with with the reversal now because i understand that the world is getting globalized now you have to also look at the bigger picture which is which is that the world is a global village okay how long are you going to shut yourself in if you are going to compete with the world compete with the world so you haven't even finished with local <laughs> <laughs> i agree i agree production. i agree but you know there's a saying that uh, if you want to Aim for if you want to go to the sky, aim for the sun. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that would be the, the logic behind that. And and it, it it's not bad if it that if that's the logic. Come mm. if you're actually going to ask our people to be competitive, let them be competitive. I, I agree with that logic. However, like I said, for me it's a mixed reaction. I am also concerned about the local production because you need to encourage Nigerians. See, this is what I think about local production. I think our major problem with local production is that we are not even truly, truly producing at our best. If we were producing at our best, so let me tell you, let me let me describe this mathematically for you, all right, and for our viewers, and I hope I, I'm I'm able to say it as simple as possible, right, so that they understand. So if you spend three hundred thousand planting one hectare of rice, that three hundred thousand is supposed to give you four tons of rice. And if you sell four tons, if you sell 
um, in four tons is about four thousand kg. Mm -hmm. So one thousand one kg is about three hundred um, um, three hundred naira now. If you do the match, you see that if you are not hitting that four ton and you are doing one point four ton, mm -hmm. you cannot even meet up your 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 initial Absolutely. expense mm -hmm. to get the, the that's where the real challenge is so that's why i say government now has to find a way to use things like technology that we offer to ensure that farmers are producing at their maximum because if we're truly producing at our maximum it wouldn't matter what who is coming in the person will come in to meet us already fully productive so that competition won't be so harsh on us because we would be able to really sell at a relatively lower price right all right so you that is coming from outside you come and see the competition in the local competition and you know you can't survive this mm. all right so that's what is really going on we ourselves are not that productive which is my major concern about the lifting of the ban so it's not a problem that they've lifted the ban but we've got to find a way to be maximally productive and i keep advocating one of the ways is is technology and the best way to get technology to farmers is through extension workers farmers have too many things to bother you know in my language you say a, a hungry man doesn't hear what the preacher is preaching the, the farmer in the village is looking for what to, to eat. just eat so you can't expect him to go out to get information exactly you have to take the information to, to him. him and not even take it to him you have to prove it to him that is of his own benefit it's so bad that when you give farmers fertilizer they would rather sell it sell the fertilizers than use it on their farm that's how bad it is why is that because they want to eat because they want to eat but this is their business <laughs> isn't it? but let, let, let's 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 talk about something um, um more uh, that that can also help this i mean we, we've also talked about financiers investors mm. are we seeing that confidence in the sector for so I, I mean i would like to invest i don't have to get my hands dirty so mm. uh, is there confidence is it structured enough but for i mean uh, the farm money mm. to africa do we have organizations you can trust and invest in because i, I even know people in diaspora mm. who do not mind investing in Af uh, in nigeria but who can we trust okay so uh, even though this is a um, counter business i'm going to promote some of my competition now okay because i frankly some of the young guys young in my my uh, most of them within my age age range are doing great so i'm going to say organizations like Afex, okay. babangona at least those two are structured organizations they're private sector organizations but they are structured i can say farm monitor too but i'll be promoting myself so you you'll okay. have to check it out for yes. yourself <laughs> but, 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 but this is it the real thing you have said now is that it doesn't we don't have the structure which is what i am saying we should build you see i've talked about coordination over and over, over. again we need to build coordination we need to build a structure a, a situation where central bank is giving this set of farmers ministry of agri is giving this set of farmers um and this other um sub what is it called nda giving mm -hmm. who is actually coordinating what is going on around because i give you a very typical instance i have an organization i'm working with okay so i can mention them because they are and um, they also need help is the leprosy missions so the right. leprosy mission is the leprosy mission nigeria is an organization that helps um that um, um, um work with people that have been plagued with leprosy mm. so usually government gives them certain locations so in in abuja they're in kwali they're okay. somewhere in yankoji kwali and we're working with them so we had a situation where at the end of the season just towards the end of the season some imputes were brought to them this impute were brought like two months late there is no way they were going to use it so when we approached um when we had our meeting our roundtable meeting with um, um the leprosy missions we raised this come you people know that some people just brought things to help they meant well to help, to help that's what, why coming, they brought yeah. but it's coming late Too can late. we now have a stakeholders meeting with everybody that wants to support the leprosy missions so that we know who is giving what at what time? At what time? So that it is actually useful because at the end of the day, those those people yes. say those things. You know, so those are the things affecting our productivity. Without that coordination, we, we are still going to have this system where things are just happening. Somebody has to be held responsible Possible. for the fact that fertilizer was supposed to be supplied since March and is coming in August. And perhaps you will now check the person was just keeping it so that the price will go high so that he will make more money wow it is a kind of system we have so until we have that system where one person is responsible my sister 
even the story of Joseph shows that he was responsible for the sales and what was going on. Somebody has to be responsible. That's true. So in all of this that is going on around, question, I would like to ask, and I frankly don't know, that's why I'm even going to throw it as a question, who is truly coordinating agricultural productivity in Nigeria? Is it the Central Bank or is it the Ministry of Agri? Or the many or the many other people that are giving mm, things exactly. um, to the farmers? Who is, because there has to be, I'm a project manager by training. I'm just finishing my PhD in project management. So it, when, when, from that perspective, I'm like, you can't run a project without a plan or a plan where everybody can do that's not even a plan where everybody can, can do, do anything, they, anything want. they want there has to be somebody at the center that when it comes to agri everything is passing through that table so that the person can say no this is already been mm. done by these people can you guys do this other one you know it's like playing in a team where everybody is playing whatever they like, they like. there has to be a coach or at the least a captain who now stays in the middle and says, no, you can't pass it this way, pass it that way. Exactly. It makes more sense. All of this um, um, spreading ourselves thin and, and having a system where people are just um, um, organization and they mean well, but without structure, without um, um, coordination. It will be it difficult, it will be to, difficult have to have the impact. outputs yeah. and the impact we exactly. want. Exactly. That's what I've always advocated. Well, if you have to talk to the Nigerian <laughs> farmer listening to you mm. right now, you have an opportunity now to, to advertise Farm Money to Africa. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and your competitors, you are very kind. I've never seen one so generous. <laughs> you don't mind your competitors. No, I don't mind. I want to help Nigeria. So exactly. So if you have to talk to Nigerian farmers listening to you right now, maybe even thinking about upscaling and uh, also considering technology for their, for their um, farm, uh, what would it be? They should take responsibility of their projects. They should take. They should be a lot more intentional and take responsibility. See, there is so much one can do for you. Okay. There is just so much one can do for you, and you can't. We can't always run a system where farmers are not business minded. You know, it's just about. Uh, you know, you have. In fact, most of our farmers just spread the seed and they allow the course of nature. Whatever they harvest. So you give them the input, they are not using it. You give them, um, 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 uh, what is it called? Herbicides, they are not using it. The rather go and sell. So they just, once they've spread the seed, that is it. <laughs> if our ancestors did it, I can do it. Like, no, so there has to be that attitudinal right. change. We've got to take responsibility of, this is your own business. Mm -hmm. So if, so for instance, we, we, we started off with having Farm Monitor free. To small water farm, but we say no. You must take responsibility, pay so that you will use it. All right. So even though we charge very minimally for small water farmers, but we see insist they pay because if you are not ready to take personal responsibility, and this is across the board, it's not just the farmers. If as a person you are not ready to take personal responsibility of your own business, you would, you would. It's, it's just a matter of time you would fizzle out and you start begging. You know, so if you can't grow your one half hectare to one hectare, exactly. you know, and you begin to empirically expand, expanding, right. which is yes, what Farm Monitor does for you. So it's, it's a, a full suite of product, uh, a full suite of uh, model that mm. financials are there. You can track your financials, and that's what we encourage farmers to do. Track everything on the farm, even the phone call you make is part of the expenses of the farm. How do you now truly know if you broke even? When you took bike and you bought fuel to the farm and that wasn't captured. Mm. And that was part of the expense of the farm. So farm monitor is that system where all of those and the good news is that all of those are already there. You don't need to write anything. You just punch, punch, punch on your phone and everything you see what you've spent and all of that. Is that is that very user friendly? Because of course we understand that we are dealing with farmers. I'm a farmer myself, so I know the pain in being on the farm and trying to keep records. So you have to keep it as simple and in a language true. that they can understand as possible. So primarily farmers generally must take responsibility of themselves and seek to grow and actually say this and that's another thing like I, I always like to say is the continuous improvement part. Right. We keep tracks of lessons learned for continuous improvement. Mm. So you, at the end of the season you can see these are the things that went wrong. Right. Okay, so I'm going to avoid these things next year. So if I was doing 1.5 um, um, ton um, on a hectare, I should be able to move to 1.6. Exactly. I move to 1.8. And in my definition, progress isn't when you move from 1 to 10. Even when you move from 1 to 1.1, 1 .1, you've made you progress. Make progress. Exactly. And that's the kind of progress we need to begin to make as Nigerians. We are too interested in a miraculous jump. 
than in taking the process step by mm. step and growing, you know, line upon line and precept upon precept. That, that's, that for me is my advice to farmers. Farmers, okay. Mm -hmm. And if you have a staircase conversation with the, the powers that be, <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? I mean, if you have to uh, speak, I don't know if it's the president you would like to talk to to get the, the uh, impact that you will want to have or the minister of agriculture, but the powers that be. I'm, I'm, uh, again, I'm, I'm very far from politics. I like to always say. However, I do. They determine how we yeah, see yeah, that yeah, thing. Yeah, actually that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's absolutely true. So if I was going to talk with any of those people the first thing i would like to see is coordination before even before you fund we have to bring all the farmers on board we know the farmers that are farming where and what crops okay so right. data data and like we do in farm monitor we are tracking your performance and productivity so we know if you are truly doing what you are doing so that even if financiers were going to give you money mm -hmm. you have a record of what you've been doing over the years to show them okay so i would advocate let's 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 first decide who is truly running and in my opinion it should be ministry of agric all right even if central bank wants to finance there should be a desk in the ministry's um, um in the ministry's office that understands what central bank is doing Do and make sure that it it's is split right. into what they are doing and every other person should have a desk so that at the end of the day, the people in that desk should be able to say, okay, this person is doing this, this person is doing this. Let's harmonize. And representatives, so to speak, there has to be that coordination before you even fund. Before you even fund, because you could just be pouring fund into a leaking bucket. Mm. We need to actually be sure that the bucket is not leaking before we begin to pour in the fund. Exactly. And of course, we have to pay a lot of attention to security. Having contagious land is better because you can get a set of security around, around it. that area but mm -hmm. you know these tiny tiny pieces of land here and there makes the um, security very difficult and i think security too should be localized okay. by now it should be i mean it's, this shouldn't be politics this should just be that we want our citizens not to die anyhow so if there's anything the local governments can do to protect the citizens, okay. or the states can do to protect the citizens, let them do why why does everything have to go all the way to the uh, um, um, central list in my opinion, these things should, uh, and these are things, once, once we begin to take these kinds of deliberate actions, we will see, like I said, we begin to see progress. The progress may not be exponential, mm. jumping from 1 to 10, but we will begin to see an increment. And it's just a matter of time, we pick up momentum, and we, I, I usually feel very sad when I talk, because I have a lot of contacts in Kenya, and, and I see what they are doing, and how vested the yeah. government is in agriculture I'll, I'll give you another classic instance of what what happened in recent time. I, I think it was in february i was in france for their one of their frame um, agri expos and um, the government they sent a couple of banks three banks to just come and sit down there and listen to investors and anybody that has a good idea right they should so the government was guaranteeing ideas the government wasn't guaranteeing anything outside the idea so if they have a good idea and you as the bank you are sure that this idea can work we are giving you guarantees that if it fails we'll return yeah. your money to you wow and i pitched our farm monitor idea and all of that and i think the only reason why um, we didn't get um, um as what we should have gotten is because we are and a Nigerian company right. and I, I'm not going to change. It's my, you know, I love this country. That's my problem. I love this country. <laughs> I love this country too much. I, I'm not going to change. And we've had opportunities to sell this outside, but we need it more in Nigeria. Why would I want to sell it? And I know that we'll have governments that will be mindful one day. Mm. And I trust is this government. Mm. Wow, you've given us so much food for thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though as a farmer, I would have preferred um, a bag of rice. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you so much, uh, Daniel Udeme Joseph. It's always wonderful. You are so passionate about what you do. Yeah. And I must commend you. I mean, man must work, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> so we've been discussing with the CEO Farm Monitor Africa, Daniel Udeme Joseph. And we've been discussing boosting food security in Nigeria. But this is where we draw the curtains on Jurassic on your life today do have a wonderful evening rest assured we'll be back tomorrow <laughs>